tomorrow, tomorrow I'm sure that I will be told um, the positive effects of these statewide, the renewable energy they will you know, present for all state residents. What do you say to that? Well, you know, when, we, when they first talked about this project, we were at some of the meetings, and we were not really against it. We weren't really for it either. We didn't know much about it. And we didn't do a whole lot of, you know, digging into it to find out about them. But when we would talk to other people, they would say, well, they're, they're high cost to put in, they're high maintenance and low production. And we didn't know what that meant until now we find out that they don't produce that 100% capacity. But it's much, much lower than that. And many times the, the grid won't take their, their energy. We, we heard nothing about that in the beginning. We just thought if you put in this green energy, it would, it would lessen the, uh, the, 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 uh, the other type of energy that they're taking, but they don't. Uh, it's just the reverse of that. So they shut down the, the windmills and uh, rely on the uh, fossil fuel energy. And now Mike got very emotional when he was talking because this is his home of almost three decades. And his family's here. He wants to stay here. But physically you have to be able to live, too. Talk to me about... You know, when people watch uh, this story, just how much it's affecting your everyday life. I mean, at your age, I'm assuming you're not planning any big plans to go build another home somewhere. No. You kind of have your roots here. What is it like at this age to feel like you're, you have to be uprooted? Being in the ministry, I've lived in many different places, including in the metropolitan area of New Jersey and New York. And we came back up in this area to be in the country. And I'm back now in the home that I was born in, that I grew up in, built in 1934 by my dad. And it's a lovely home, and it's a beautiful area. You know the neighbors, and you get along with them, there's no real feuds going on, and it's peaceful. I mean, I came home one day from Greenfield, and I didn't park my car in the garage, I parked in the driveway, and I got out and I said, what's wrong? And what was wrong was the windows were all shut down, and it was absolutely quiet, like the country should be. When I come home now, normally, yeah, if I go in the garage, even in the garage, without the door shut, you hear this, you know, like a helicopter overhead with the blades whirling. Or you think the wind is really blowing, and there's no wind blowing, it's just this, uh, this sound that is constantly there. The day they first came on, our cat literally went crazy, racing around the house to find a, a place that we didn't know what was going on even driving her crazy because she was hearing more than we were in the house. But since then, she has even changed her sleeping habits. She used to sleep in the front bedroom during the daytime. Now she sleeps in a far bedroom as far as she can get away from that side where the windows are on. And, uh, it's just there constantly. And uh, the peace and quiet that I used to think about going out into the yard as a youngster or even as a young man because we lived down below that house for the first few years of our marriage. You could go out there and sit you might hear the frogs, the peepers in the spring, and you might hear an occasional owl or something, but it was absolutely quiet. Very little traffic on that road either. That has changed drastically as well. But it was quiet and peaceful. You could put the stars and realize what a beautiful world that God created for us to live in, and we've lost control of it. It's like living back in the middle of the city where, we, where I went to college. The noise was incredible, but here we are. And at night, we'll wake up in the middle of the night and wonder, why, why am I awake? You know, I know. I, I sleep through the night. But now I wake up. My wife wakes up. You know, it's just not, just not good. Now, what's your first and last name, sir? My first name is Irving. It's all with an I. <laughs> last name is Mullet. M-U-L-L-E-T-T-E. -T -T -E. And your name is? Rosalyn Mullet. R-O-S-A-L-Y-N. And you've lived um, here for how many years now? I know this was your childhood home, but... Together, how long have you been? So it's moved back up here in 1993, but into the home we're in now in 2004. Okay, all right. It's the homestead. I mean, we were always there because his mom and dad were there until just a few years ago. Okay. And it was their wish for us to have the house, so then we're living in the house. I'll be 76 in November, and he'll be 75 next month. Okay. And that, this whole thing puts a lot of stress on us, like you say, wondering what's going to happen. Because two years ago, he had a massive heart attack and quadruple uh, bypass surgery. And I worry about the stress on him. And I'll say, well, if we're going to leave, I don't want to even think about it. But I said, we don't know if we can put up with it. I have headaches now. He didn't. I've documented them on a calendar. I've taken just a regular calendar and every day check down what time, 
we get headaches so that it's documented and, and can show that it's not just in our heads. Um, how far do you live from the Boozik Wind Farm, I guess? I know you see them, but okay, when, they... When, oh, go ahead. When the rep was at our house mm -hmm. from the company, he said we're about 2,000 feet from the, from the window. Okay, all right. And then um, you see seven of them, you said, from your seven. home. And Mike, how far are you, would you say? 3,000 How many? 3,000. 3,000 feet. And Larry, how far are you? 5,000. Okay, great. Before you guys go, what I just want to do, this